In this video, we will be discussing two-dimensional coordinate system and graphs. And specifically, here we see the objectives are to determine the distance and midpoint between any two points, how to graph different types of equations, how to calculate the x and y intercepts of an equation, and how to determine the center and radius of a circle if given an equation. So to begin with, let's talk about our coordinate system. And the coordinate system we use, typically, is the Cartesian coordinate system. So right here is an example of our coordinate system. So here we have different parts of it. All right, so we have the horizontal axis, which is also called the x-axis. This is the one, or the line, that goes left to right. And then we have a vertical axis, which is the one that goes up and down, and is many times called the y-axis. Where these two axes intersect is called the origin, and that's this spot right here. Now notice there are four different parts of this coordinate system. This top right corner is called quadrant one, and then if you go counterclockwise from quadrant one over to the left up here, that would be quadrant two. And then keep going, that would be quadrant three. Down here is quadrant four. So those are the different parts of the Cartesian coordinate system. Now with this coordinate system, we can plot or graph different points, and these points are many times called an ordered pair. So it's a pair because we have an x and a y value. So for example, let's say we were to graph the point 2, 1. What that means is that we go over 2 in the positive direction for x on the horizontal axis, and then we go up 1 to get this point right here. All right, and then if we had negative 2, 1, that means that x is negative 2, so we go in the negative direction for x, which is to the left, and then we go up 1, which is a positive direction for y. So we go to the left 2, up 1. Negative 2, negative 1 would be down here, where we go 2 to the left for x, because that is the negative direction for x, and then negative 1 means we go down 1, which is the negative direction for y. So we get this point right here. And then if we had 2, negative 1, we'd go 2 in the positive direction for x, and then we go down 1, which is the negative direction for y, and we get this point right here. So hopefully at this point we were pretty good with, with graphing ordered pairs, but do be careful with the negatives. Now with ordered pairs, we can say that ordered pairs are equal if, and only if, a equals c and b equals d, if you were given uh, ordered pairs like this, where you have a, b, and c, d. So basically, for them to be equal, you need the x values equal and the y values need to be equal. All right. So for example, uh, if we had like you know four six, that would equal four six. X and x are equal. Y and y are equal. Now, if you had one where you were trying to figure out a missing part, we can use the fact that they're equal to figure out those missing parts. So here if we have x comma negative 5 and 3 comma y, we're told these ordered pairs are equal. Well that means the x values would be equal, so x would have to equal 3, and the y values must be equal, so negative 5 would have to equal y. So y would equal negative 5. So we can use that information to conclude that x equals 3 and y equals negative 5. And this little symbol, by the way, with three dots, that means therefore. All right, so we have, if this statement is true, if these ordered pairs are equal, therefore x equals three and y equals negative five. Now with ordered pairs, we can find the distance and the midpoint between any two ordered pairs. So the distance between any two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is given by this formula right here, where the distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So for me personally, I like to uh, think of this or remember this formula by thinking of the Pythagorean theorem because that's where it comes from, all right? So Pythagorean theorem says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So a and b are the lengths of two sides of a triangle, all right? So to find that between two order pairs, the length of a is the difference between the x values and the length of b is the difference of the y values. So that gives you the, the, the length of the sides of the triangle. And then C is going to be the distance. It's the hypotenuse of the triangle. 
All right? So that's where it comes from. And then you just take the square root of both sides to get C, which is the distance or the length from between the two points. Take the square root of both sides. We have X. Um, oh, don't forget the squared up here. All right, because A squared, B squared. So we have A squared, B squared. Y2 minus Y1 squared and X2 minus X1 squared. So when you take the square root of both sides, all that is going to be inside of the radical. All right, and C is the length between the two points. So uh, C is typically hypotenuse, and in this case, uh, that's the distance between the two points. So we can replace C with D. It's really the same thing, but that's where the formula comes from. So as long as you have it memorized and know how to use it, uh, that's fine, but I personally like to use uh, remember it with the Pythagorean theorem. All right, we're going to get some practice in a moment with that, but we also want to show you how to find the midpoint between any two points. So if you're given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the midpoint is found by averaging the x's and averaging the y's. So that's what we see here. Midpoint, capital M, equals the average of the x's, so you add and divide by 2, and then the average of the y's, you add and divide by 2. So midpoint, think average. Now let's try an example where you're given two ordered pairs, and we're going to try to find the midpoint, and then we're going to try to find the distance. We'll start with the midpoint because it's a little simpler to work with. Here we're trying to find the midpoint and the length of the segment connecting the points 4, negative 3, and negative 2, 6. So remember, midpoint is found by averaging the x's. So if we take 4 plus negative 2, and divide by 2, that gives us the x value for the midpoint. And then average of the y's would be negative 3 plus 6, and then divide by 2. So if you do that, we're going to get 2 over 2, which is 1. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3 over 2, which is 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. So the midpoint would be at 1, comma, 1 and a half. And we see that typed up right here. Now to find the distance, okay, we take the square root of, and then x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if we subtract the x values, okay, and actually it doesn't matter the order in which we subtract the x's and the y's, because when you square it, it's going to change the sign to be positive no matter what. So if you just subtract the x values, 4 minus negative 2, that gives you positive 6, and then you square it. All right, and then if you do the y2 minus y1, so let's subtract the y values, negative 3 and 6. Uh, let's do 6 minus negative 3 to keep it positive. 6 minus negative 3 would be 9. So you have 9 squared. So you subtract the x's, square it. Subtract the y's, square it. It's going to give you 36 plus 81. And then 36 plus 81 would give you 117. And we see that all typed up right here. So we have the square root of 117. Now you can get a decimal answer, which would be about 10.8 if you round. All right, so you can do it that way. Or if you want to keep the radical in there, you can simplify this radical. And 117, uh, that can break down. So you can divide by 3. And that gives you, what, 3, 9, 39. And then that divides by 3 again. You get 3 times 13. So we have a group of three, so we can pull out, and then you're left with a 13 on the inside of the radical. So that would simplify to get three times the square root of 13. All right, so that's how you find the midpoint and the distance. And again, remember, it doesn't matter which direction you subtract the x values. So if you do four minus negative two, that's gonna give you positive six, and then square it to get positive 36. But if you do it the other way, where you have negative two minus four squared, that would still give you a positive 36 when you square it. So it doesn't matter the order in which we subtract the x and the y values because we're going to get the same end result. So now let's talk a little bit more about midpoint. All right, so we have another example here where now we are trying to find the other endpoint of a line segment that has one endpoint at negative 2, negative 5, and the midpoint is at negative 9, positive 9. So it's working backwards. So we have midpoint, and we have one endpoint, and we're trying to find the other endpoint. 
So to do this, we can think through this as uh, point one being negative two, negative five. And the second point we don't know, we'll call it x and y. So it's an ordered pair with an unknown x and y value. And then the midpoint is at negative nine, nine. So what do we know about the relationship between the points and the midpoint? Well, the x value for the midpoint is found by averaging the x's. So if we average negative two and x, so we add and divide by two, that would equal negative nine. So we have a little equation here that we can solve. Negative two plus x over two equals negative nine. Same thing for the y values. If we average negative five and y, so we add and divide by two, that would equal nine the value for the midpoint. So we can do that. We can do negative five plus y divided by two and set that equal to nine. So from here we can solve both equations. The first one we multiply both sides by two to get rid of the two in the denominator. Now we have negative two plus x equals negative 18. And then we can add two to both sides of the equation. We have x equals negative 16. And then looking at the y the y part over here, the second equation, we can solve this one by multiplying both sides by two. Now we have negative five plus y equals positive 18. And then solve by adding five to both sides. When you do that, we have y on the left and then 23 on the right. So you put it together, we have our second point would be at negative 16 comma 23. And we can double check our work because if we take the two points, uh, point one and point two, and average the x's and the y's, we would find that indeed we do get the midpoint down here of negative nine, nine. Now let's switch gears a little bit, and we're going to work with graphing of an equation. So when you graph an equation, the graph of an equation in the two variables x and y is the set of all the points x, y, whose coordinates satisfy the equation. So the way we're gonna approach graphing in this lesson is we're going to basically just plot different points. So we're not learning uh, quick techniques necessarily to, to do the graphing. This is kind of the longer way, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in something for our x or y value and then determine the other variable from that. All right, so for example, if we had the equation of y equals x squared minus three, and you were told to graph this. What we can do is we can create a little table where we're, we have x and y, and you can plug in different numbers. So if you plug a zero in for x, you plug it into the equation, we would have zero squared minus three, and that would give you negative three. So y would equal negative three when x is equal to zero. You can plug in a one for x, we would have one squared minus three, which would be negative two, you plug a two in for x, we have two squared minus three, which is one. Plug a three in for x, we have three squared minus three, which is six. And we can plug in some other numbers. Let's try maybe negative one. Plug a negative one in, we have negative one squared minus three, which would be negative two. Plug a negative two in, we have negative two squared minus three, which would be one. Plug negative three in, we have negative three squared minus three, which would be six. And we could keep going and get more and more points if we want. So from here, we can take each of, these, each of these points that we found and plot them. So like right here, this would be the point zero, negative three. And this would be the point one, negative two. And this would be two, comma, one, et cetera. We can do that for each of these to get our points and plot them. So we're not gonna take the time to you know, plot each individual one to show you where it goes. We're assuming you're pretty good at, at plotting ordered pairs. But if you plot those, you're gonna get a graph looking like this. So you have these different dots, these points, and we can see the general shape of the graph. And it's gonna be a curve, it's a parabola. So you connect the dots with a smooth curve like this, and that is your graph. So if you see anything like that where it's something squared, it's gonna be in the shape of a parabola. So like a U like that, or an upside down U, or it could even be sideways if we have the Y being squared. So if it was like x equals y squared, it would be sideways. And actually the second example here, we have that. We have x equals y squared. And we're gonna to try to graph this one. So again, we could plug in points. And here we're gonna plug in for y because it's gonna be quicker. All right, so if you plug in say negative three for y, 
we just square it to get 9 for x. Plug negative 2 in for y, we square it to get 4 for x. Plug negative 1 in for y, we have well, negative 1 squared, which is 1 for x. We keep going, 0 for y would give you 0 squared for x, which is 0. Plug a 1 in for y, we'd have 1 squared, which is 1, 2. Plug that in for y, we have 2 squared, which was equal to 4. Plug a 3 in for y, 3 squared is 9, and we could keep going if we wanted to. And you plot all these points, and again, so we're assuming that you know how to plot ordered pairs. But when you plot them, you're going to get a graph that looks like this. So notice this red curve, that is our parabola. All right, so it's going to be sideways when you have a y being squared. So again, if you have like y equals x squared, like that, if the y is the one you've solved for, it's going to be opening in the y direction, so like up or down. And then if it's x equals y squared, so the x is the one that solved for, so x equals the y squared, it's opening in the x direction, which would be to the right, like this, or it could be to the left, like this. All right, so that's the general shape of those types of graphs. And again, to be uh, precise, you're going to want to plug in different values for x or for y to find the other missing part to create your ordered pairs. So those would be considered quadratic equations. Quadratic would be anything to the second power. But we're going to explain a different kind right here. This is an absolute value equation. So this may be a little different for you. And here we have y equals the absolute value of x plus 3. So again, when we're trying to graph this, we just plug in different points for x and for y. So we're just going to plot different, different numbers. We plug a 0 in for x. We have 0 plus 3 is 3. And the absolute value of 3 is 3. Plug a 1 in for x. We have 1 plus 3, which would give you 4. And the absolute value of 4 is 4. If you plug negative 1 in for x, we have negative 1 plus 3, which would be positive 2. And then take the absolute value, and that would still be positive 2. Plug a negative 2 in for x, we have negative 2 plus 3, which is positive 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. We can plug in some more. We can try negative 3 for x. When you plug that in, we have negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. What about negative 4? Well, you plug a negative 4 in, we have negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. Take the absolute value, and that gives you positive 1. Plug a negative 5 in, we have negative 5 plus 3, that gives you negative 2, and the absolute value of that would be positive 2. So we have plenty of points we can graph now. We have 0, 3, 1, 4, negative 1, 2, etc. So if you plot those points, notice what we get. It's going to be the shape of a V. So it's, it comes to a point right here. So it's different than a, than a parabola. It's not a curve, it's actually a straight line to the left, like that, and then it comes to a point. It's not a curve, it's not uh, just stops right here, and then goes up in the other direction, like this, as a line. All right, so that would be your, your graph and the general shape of any absolute value, but specifically this one here, this would be the graph for uh, this problem. Now, speaking of graphs, we have a term uh, when we deal with graphs called the intercepts. So intercepts, by definition, is where it intercepts or crosses over either the x or the y-axis. All right, so in math notation, we can say that if x1 comma 0 satisfies an equation, then that point is called an x-intercept of the graph of the equation. In other words, as we said, that's where the graph crosses the axis. All right, so um, where it crosses the x-axis, that is called your x-intercept. Okay, and then where it crosses the y-axis, that is called the y-intercept. And this is a lot of math lingo. I'm not too um, concerned with understanding the terminology of this, but um, we'll explain how to use this statement here. But for the y-intercept, um, it's going to be at the point 0, comma, something, some number. So for the x-intercept, we need to figure out what is x equal to. All right, when we plug in a 0 for x or for y. For the y-intercept, we plug a 0 in for x, and we try to solve for y. So let's explain that a little more in detail, try to make more sense of this. 
So if you're given this graph, or this equation of y equals x squared plus 2x minus 15, and you were told to find the x and the y intercepts. Well, you could graph it and go through that long process of graphing, plugging in points for x and for y. So you could go that method and then try to figure out where it crosses the x and the y axis. And you could do that. But, um, and we see here with this, with this graph, notice the x-intercepts would be here at negative 5. That's where it crosses the x-axis. And it crosses over here at positive 3. And the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, which is down here at negative 15. So we can see it graphically, see where it crosses over the x and the y-axis. But it's simpler if we can do that without having to graph. So if we were told to find the x-intercepts, okay, notice that both of those x-intercepts here at negative 5 and positive 3, notice that it's right on the x-axis. Or in other words, it's uh, the y value is going to be 0. It's not up or down at all. It's right there when y is equal to 0. So what we do is for the x-intercepts, we plug a 0 in for y, and then we solve for x. So x, for the x-intercepts, we were solving for x. And for the y-intercepts, we'd be doing the same kind of idea. But instead, uh, it's going to be plugging a 0 in for x and then solving for y. Because at the y-intercept, notice it's neither left nor right. It's right here on the y-axis. So x would be 0 for the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, we'll be backwards. We're plugging a 0 in for x and then solving for y. So let's try first with the x-intercepts. You plug a 0 in for y. So into that equation, now we're going to get 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. Now this equation can factor. So we're assuming you know how to factor at this point. And when you factor, you're going to get x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now using the zero product property, we can set each part equal to 0. So either x plus 5 would equal 0, or x minus 3 would equal 0. So that means that x would equal negative 5, or x would equal positive 3. And that's what we saw in the graph, right? The x-intercepts were at negative 5 and at 3. So those points were at negative 5, comma, 0, and 3, comma, 0, right? Because y was 0 when we solved that. y was 0 when x was negative 5, and y was 0 when x was 3. So those are the two points. Now the y-intercept is actually easier to solve for because here, as we mentioned, we're going to plug a 0 in for x and solve for y. So plug a 0 in for x, we would have y equals 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 15. So 0 squared is 0, 2 times 0 is 0. That leaves you with just negative 15. So y is equal to negative 15. So the order pair would be at 0, negative 15. And notice that's what we had in the graph, right? The y-intercept was down here at the point 0, negative 15. So just be careful because um, sometimes people forget, you know, which, which one do we plug a 0 for x in for, and which one do we plug a 0 for y in for. The way I personally remember this is that the x-intercepts were solving for x. The y-intercepts were solving for y. So if we're solving for x, you need to plug a 0 for y. When you solve for y, plug a 0 for x. All right, so as long as you remember the difference, that's fine, but that's my personal method to remember which one you're plugging zeros for. Next we're going to talk about circles and the graph of circles. So a circle, I think we know what it looks like. We have a picture over here. It's the blue shape. It's uh, the round object over there. And the definition of a circle is the set of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from a specified point. The fixed distance is called the radius and the specified point is the center of the circle. All right, so the center in this picture is at the point h comma k. And the distance from the center to any point on the circle is called the radius. So with a circle, we have a general equation that we can use to represent and to graph the circle. And that equation is derived from the distance formula. All right, so we, we learn the distance 
equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now in this case, the distance um, that we're concerned about is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. And we'll call that point x, y. So the center we'll call h, k, h comma k, and the other point on the circle we'll call x, y. And then r is gonna be your, your radius, but uh, so your distance between the two points. So in place of d, we can put in r, and then our x2 and x1 values would be x and h. Those are your x values. So for those two points, we have x and h. So we subtract those and then square it, plus then your y values would be the y and the k. So we subtract those, y minus k, and then square that. So that's what we have is the radius equals the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And then what we can do to put this into standard form is we square both sides to get rid of the square root. So when you do that, you now have r squared on the left, and then x minus h squared plus y minus k squared on the right. And then we'll just actually flip it around. So we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So this is your standard form of a circle. And the center is going to be at the point h, k. So h comma k. And the radius is this letter r. So that's where the standard form comes from. And then how do we interpret this? Well, let's say we had uh, this equation right here of x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 36. All right, what we do is we can take this equation and we can just look at it to find the center and the radius because it's already in the correct format. If it's helpful, you could put the y with uh, 0. It's like y minus 0 squared equals 36. So the center is found by looking at this number and this number. What we do is we change the sign though. So if it's a negative 2, we change it to a positive 2. And here we have 0, it's just going to be 0. So the center is going to be at 2 comma 0. And always change the sign from whatever was inside of the parentheses. And then the radius is found by looking at this number because 36 is r squared. So if that's r squared or radius squared, we take the square root of 36, which would equal 6. So we know the center is at 2, 0, and the radius is at 6. And we could actually graph this very quickly. So if we go over 2 up 0, it takes you right here. And then the radius is 6, meaning from this point, we can go every direction 6 places. So go over to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get another point. We go to the left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, takes you here. We can go down 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so down to here from the center. Then we can go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we can just connect those dots, it's not going to be a perfect circle because we're just sketching this freehand, uh, but you get the idea, hopefully. Connect those, and that should give you a circle. So we can use the center and the radius to quickly graph the equation of that circle. And then, uh, again, one more second before moving on to the next one. If this were a positive 2 in the middle, x plus 2, the center would be at negative 2. So you change the sign always. Now here, for example, 2, we're working backwards. We're trying to find the equation of a circle given the center and the radius. So for this one, we know it's going to be in this format of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. That is your standard form of a circle. So what we can do is realize that 5 is h, negative 7 is k. So we have x minus h, so x minus 5 squared, plus y minus k, so y minus negative 7, which gives you a plus 7, then squared equals radius squared. So 3 squared would give you 9. So the equation of the circle would be right here. x minus 5 squared plus y plus 7 squared equals 9. Now we're going to talk more about circles, 
but we're going to increase the difficulty a little bit. So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to find the equation of a circle whose diameter has endpoints at negative 17, negative 9, and at negative 19, negative 9. So we're trying to find the equation of the circle. So to find the equation of a circle, we need to know the center, we need to know the radius. All right, so to find the center, okay, the center, realize that this diameter um, is going to be like that, something like that. So uh, if you create a circle around this, okay, the center of the circle is going to be the center of that diameter. So assuming we drew that, that picture correctly, it's not the best picture, but um, the center of that line segment is at the center of our circle. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the midpoint between these two points. And that's how we find the center. So the midpoint we discussed previously in the lesson is found by averaging the x's. So we add negative 17 and negative 19, divide by 2. And then we average the y's, negative 9 plus negative 9, divide by 2. So here, for the x value, if we add negative 17 and negative 19, that gives you a negative 36. So we have negative 36 over 2. And then for the y value, we have negative 9 plus negative 9 over 2, which would be negative 18 over 2. So you divide those, we're going to get negative 18 comma negative 9. So your center is at that point, negative 18, negative 9. Now the diameter uh, was given to us as being connected by these two points. But what we need is the radius. So what we can do is we can find the radius, first of all, by finding the length between these two points and then just divide it in half because the length between these two points is your diameter and the radius is half your diameter. So let's try that. So we're going to find the distance from these two points. So we can do distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so we can subtract the x values. So we have um, negative 17 minus negative 19. So minus the negative makes a plus. So negative 17 plus 19, that gives you positive 2. So that gives you positive 2 squared plus y2 minus y1. We have negative 9 minus negative 9, which becomes a plus 9, which would give you 0. So what we have is the distance equals the square root of 4 plus 0, which would be 4. So the diameter, the distance between those two points would be 2. So the distance is 2, which means the radius would equal 1. So the radius is 1, and the center is at this point. So we can then use that to create our equation of a circle. So again, remember, our equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So we plug in uh, h and k. So we have x minus negative 18, which becomes plus 18 squared, plus, and then y minus k. So y minus negative 9, which becomes a plus 9 squared, equals r squared. So 1 squared would give you 1. So this here is our equation of the circle that has the diameter at the endpoints of negative 17, negative 9, and negative 19, negative 9. Now one more thing, and this is the most difficult part of the lesson, in my opinion. What we have now is we have the general form of a circle, and we're trying to convert into standard form. And actually, this is not really in general form, but we're, our goal is we're trying to convert to standard form. So like the equations we had for the other examples. So what we need to do is realize that on the left side of our equation of a circle is going to be all of that you know, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And on the right side is going to be some number. So what we need is the number on the right side and everything else on the left side to begin. So see this 24y? Let's bring it over here by subtracting 24y. 
So what we have is going to be y squared plus 2x plus x squared and then minus 24y equals negative 120. All right, so we're getting closer. We have the number on the right side, everything else on the left side. From here, what we want is the x part to be becoming first, right? Because we're going to have x minus h squared at the beginning. So let's put the x squared part first, and let's put the 2x right next to it. So the x's we'll put together, and then we'll put the y's together. So we have a positive y squared and a negative 24y. And I'm leaving a little blank here and here because what we're going to do is we want to create this to be a perfect square with x's. So x plus or minus something squared plus we want y plus or minus something squared and then equaling something on the right. So we're going to make this happen by completing the square twice. We do it with the x's and then with the y's. So we learned how to complete the square previously. And to complete the square, we're going to take this 2 for the x's. So looking at the x's, we take the 2, we take half, and then square it. Half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So we're going to add 1 here, but we also need to add 1 to the right side as well to make the equation balance. Now looking at the y's. Okay, same thing. We take this negative 24, we take half and then square it. Half of negative 24 is negative 12, and then you square 12 to get 144. So you add 144 here on the left, and then also over here on the right. So on the left side, the x squared plus 2x plus 1 can factor to get x plus 1 times x plus 1, or x plus 1 squared. And then looking at the y part, that can factor to get y minus 12 squared. And then on the far right, we do negative 120 plus 1 plus 144, and that's going to give you 25. So we're done. We have our general form, or sorry, standard form of a circle. This is our standard form. And from here, if we wanted to, we can find the center because already in the correct format, the center would be opposite of the 1, so negative 1, opposite of negative 12, which is positive 12, and the radius is the square root of 25, which is 5. So we've put into standard form by completing the square, and we also, from here, can find the center and radius, and we can also graph if we wanted to as well. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.